But who's the one who like was like, I'm gonna start fucking with people by giving them shots of Malor. <laughs> oh, like that guy. Yeah, yeah that, that's what I'm I saying. Know. The uh, but it, it's now it's like it's become like a hipster thing where people pretend that it's not bad. Well, there's a real like population that because it's actually supposed to settle your stomach. So right. if you're one of those people that like gets like those cleans out your stomach. super like uh, sugary shots get to your stomach. Yeah, like, it's supposed to be like one is easily digestible. So it's like a good nightcap, like at the end, of, yeah. so you don't vomit in your sleep. I would say, yeah, and it has the longest aftertaste. Like you'll taste yeah. it if, you, if, if you have it on Saturday. From the shop yeah. Itself, like just from that sip. You'll you'll brush your teeth for seventy two hours and still taste it. This just reminds me of how many assholes are in this city. <laughs> that like <laughs> that this becomes the most popular thing. A shot that ruins your night yeah, and yeah. then sticks with you for forty eight hours. <laughs> Welcome That's to fun. Chicago. Welcome. Um, All in good fun, though. Yeah. All right, we could uh, we could let it rip. And so do you want one? I Daniel think we have one in the secret container over I there. I mean, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Hey, do we have one? Malor. Malort. Malort. Yeah. So okay, with a, a T. It's a Swedish liqueur. Oh, that's right yeah. up my fucking alley then, dude. Yeah. Let's pour it over some pickled herring and get down. <laughs> some fucking we, fiskaballer. We have a, we have a guy. He's got a show. It's out in New York called Lowering the Bar. Yeah. And the whole show is just like eating disgusting food. Yeah. And most of it's from Scandinavia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They don't yeah. they don't fuck around with good yeah. flavors. There. Right. They're just like, we just have to survive the winter. <clears throat> These are calories. It's, it yeah. is brutal. Oh, Look, you at, do Look have at the it. pride. Look oh, at this boy. guy. Wanna... What, is, what, what, what is going <laughs> uh, on? Here? It's 1048 in the morning. That's it's not Cinco usually when Mayo, I drink dude. It is Unbelievable. Uh, we could let it rip if uh, everybody's ready. Yeah. Ready. I don't think we'll ever be ready for this this early, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, all right, Big Mang. Today is Wednesday. It's May 10th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. Free Swim Wednesday. We have a guest here joining Chief Danny and I. It's Anders Holm from Evanston. What What's up? up? <laughs> yeah, what up, guys? <laughs> How are you? So we're kicking it off. I swear to the people who are watching, we did not White Sox Dave this man. Yeah. And like, so we have a guy who works with us, Anders, and he's. The Malort guy who's always yeah, like, oh, you yeah. gotta do it, and he's just that, shoving it in people's yeah. gullets. That's, that's why there's only a, like a quarter of the bottle left. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. One guy. Some bad what a white cool socks personality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool personality. <laughs> and you said they're like, I never did one, so you, you kind of wanted to, you know. Well, you didn't want. To, so here's my uh, Holly, who's who's running me around, running me ragged, honestly, uh, doing PR this weekend, was like, uh, Malort, Malort, and I'm like, I don't know what this is. So I was just saying before we got on here, like. Obviously, Malort's been around for a little while, but who's the guy or, or gal who started this whole phenomenon of making friends do shots of Malort? So I heard a rumor a while back that the guy who created it would suck on cigars and he got bad mouth cancer and he couldn't taste anything. So he just wanted something he could taste, period. And this is what he came up with. But what I'm saying is, okay, we know that guy. But okay. who's the guy who turned it into this social phenomenon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm sure you've done that. Everyone kind of just likes to do dumb shit at the bar when they're bored. Yep. But how do you now. discover Malort? And then how cool does this guy get that he's like, and now the city does this shitty shot because of me? <laughs> it always turned into like, if tourists come here, you got to yeah. give them a shot. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And then obviously they had to slice a deep dish, so they'll be yakking within the next 15 yep. minutes from the combo. And I mean, like, this is like Jordan... Baggy shorts, basketball level, <laughs> changing the game type shit right yeah. here. It is. Well, and then we have we have probably half of the New York office is moving out here, and that none of them, only maybe two guys are from here originally, or one yeah. guy. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's going to be like a thing. I right can't here. wait for the New York pasta personality guy to meet the Malort <laughs> personality guy and yeah. just hit it off and well, move in together. Our main producer is here and like we keep trying to give him different pizzas to try. He's like, all oh, these are trash. Yeah, yeah, he just yeah, hates yeah, everything. Yeah. Well, so what are you going to do? Yeah. yeah, you don't like the New squares. York's a different mentality. Yeah, yeah. The squares weird him out. Yeah. So yeah. It's like, yeah, thing. I get that. All right. All right Guys, we're doing it. Right. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Do you hear that? Should we do it near the mic for uh, yeah, for the people really know? <laughs> there it is. Yeah. See, it's really happening, guys. Yep. See that just like that little aftertaste. I mean, that just tastes like my heritage, guys. <laughs> you you said it's that well. Swedish, right? Yeah. This isn't bad to me. I went to college in Madison, Wisconsin, and like rumple mints was what this was. If you wanted to fuck somebody over, you'd give them a shot of rumple mints. So I'm in on on rumple mints. You like it? Yeah. We, you yeah, brush I, your teeth with rumple mints. Yeah. Well, it, well, back in the day, if it were, if you were gonna, let's say you're gonna puke and rally. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Just, yeah. 
throw a little rumble mitts in there, get your breath fresh. But I have a, I have a friend who has a bar in Old Town, and that's the only thing he drinks. So we, when we go there, and he always just comes over with a tray of, of rumble mints. So it's that to me is like totally fine now. Wow. I have a buddy who treats rumble mints like as it's Listerine. Right. Yeah. yeah it's like yeah, at yeah. home, not even drinking. My breath smells. I didn't mints. even grab for his water. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't like how much. Hot. I don't like how well you handled that. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. Your face was stone cold, like no little. Oh. Drip, no drip. <laughs> By the way, I, so like, they, did you this, pour some apple juice? Yeah. Like, what's going on? This here? was not bad for me, but I, I'm also uh, guilty of being like the guy in my friend group who, when we're all doing shots, I have to hold it in my mouth. I okay. can't just down the hatchet, right? Okay. So like, I feel like that makes it worse. It's brutal. Yeah, it's yeah. bad. Like if you do like Jameson or just like a shitty tequila, it's over. Mm-hmm. Like. The, the you get those mouth sweats and you're like Mm-mm. and like just it takes like two or three gulps to get those down just like the the whole sweat you're sweating you don't breathe you it's just, gross it's yeah. bad but you did that you do that because down the hatch would kind of fuck you up right because I, I was the no same way. I have like the I have like a gag reflex uh here bend oh, <laughs> take your pants down um just do it chief no but like I can't like slam a beer Mm-hmm. I have to like gulp, gulp, gulp. You can't open, gulp. open the throat. Yeah. 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 I'm not a chugger um, either. And I don't know. You know, yeah. I, I used to feel bad about it, but. Uh, I still feel bad about it, even though I'm 37, because people look at me and they see my body type and they're like, this guy can chug. And yeah, then yeah, they're yeah. always disappointed. Yeah. I feel bad. I'm like, yeah. and I'm going to sip it casually. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we'll start a support group or yep. something. <laughs> yeah. We should. That's yeah. what we do now. <laughs> so we saw your movie yesterday. Did you really? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, cool. Yep. Funny. Yeah. yeah. It was funny. Yeah. We liked right, it. We liked it. Call uh, our dads immediately after. I <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> have to, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And my brother-in-law. I called the kids. I went to <laughs> you just go. With. Yeah. I wish you were Robert De Niro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Son, you've already told me this three times already. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's called About My Father. It comes out May 26th. Uh, how fun is it to play a douchebag like that? It's great. And it's just so easy for me. Uh, it is kind of a heartbreaker that people are like, you just keep getting sent douchebag roles. And you're like, yeah, no, I guess I've got like a super punchable face. But uh, like, I have range. Yeah. I'm a nice got, boy. Yeah. I've got range. I could be like preppy douchebag or also like business casual douchebag. I said to you outside too, out there, I was like, hey, did you just channel your inner, like the most douchey Loyola kid that you knew growing up? Like, yeah. Is Shout there someone? out to the Ram, uh, Ramblers. Um, who's the douchiest Loyola guy I know? Uh, I hope you hit us with a Chad. Uh, Please have a name. Are there Chads at Loyola? I feel like oh, it's yeah. mostly like Mike's and Patty's. Like Bennington there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. I don't want to. Um, <laughs> burn anybody yeah, it's too been like hard. 20 years or something since you graduated right also it was so, yeah, yeah. Like, but uh, fuck them but it, it's more of like a new trier uh yeah, yeah, yeah. you know yeah. what i mean lake that's forest true. new trier for yeah. sure that's way true. way worse shout yeah. out to new trier fuck yeah. off yeah. <laughs> there you go yeah. softest uh football field in the world they still have natural grass i, I would just t- i would sleep there all night it's like yeah the way they take care of it i think it's only like four home football games and like varsity soccer. They uh-huh. don't practice on it. For nothing. New Trier? Yes. It uh-huh. is like the nicest surface. Ever <laughs> All right. Like, like the more I'll you know. take your word for it, but also like stop complimenting them. <laughs> I mean, they they bring in new sod every night <laughs> is what's happening. They probably do. Yeah. Some poor they guy's like, do. oh, fuck, I got to yeah. roll this out. Uh, uh. They probably do. Yeah. You know what uh, realization I was having? Probably this past weekend, which was like, I know you always get those like telltale signs of like, I'm fucking old. Mm-hmm. But uh, we, yeah. we, we, we went, I went to dinner in a place that was in like a, a little, little strip mall complex that had a movie theater. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, like, let's, let's go past. Let's see the show times. Remember when you had to fucking call the theater mm-hmm. and phone. be like, hey, yeah, yeah what's how are you looking the paper? Yeah. The paper was such like an attribute. I remember the paper, like the phone was like, yo, did you know you can call for movie <laughs> yeah. times now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I remember calling and talking to a person <laughs> and having the person being like, what movie? And you're like this movie. And they'd be like, we have this showtime, that showtime. And then they were like, we can't be fucking having nine year olds calling us for movie <laughs> yeah, times, yeah. right? <laughs> Let's yeah. just have the guy with the voice who's like movie yeah. phone. Yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, Crazy. dude. It's, you would you would uh, love that job. Oh yeah, yeah. just to tell people. Yeah. What's and then on. just give yeah. like a little thirty second review. About my like. father, seven ten. Come yeah. on in. Yeah. Andres yeah. plays a great douchebag. Was a ten year old Eddie trying to make his voice deeper to ask what time the R rated movies were playing? Oh yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when's Predator Two <laughs> playing tonight? Um, I want to bring my daughter. <laughs> It was like little rascals. The scene. Wait, yeah. about the movie, which I haven't seen because I, I don't watch. I try not watch things until they're premiering okay. um, because if if they're bad, I don't want to go to the premiere. Sure. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Did they show me golfing? Uh, yes. the, there's like an opening montage yes. of like yes. in the sky. Yeah. Yes. Do you, you see like where the shank, ball goes? You shanked the fuck out of it. I hooked it, yeah. right? Bad. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've fixed the But they the hook. didn't acknowledge it. No, 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 it, no. Yeah, they're just like, oh, yeah, I nailed that I one. I told them, I go, guys, I got a bad, or sorry, slice. I sliced it for sure. I got a bad slice. And they're like, doesn't matter. You probably won't see it. <laughs> oh, you see but it. But the way the camera, <laughs> I was like, it's for sure. But I've corrected yeah. the slice. And Good. So I'm very excited. Just, just, just acting, right? Just yeah. acting. That's not exactly. Yeah. I was yeah. deep in character. Right. Yeah. Made it funnier, yeah. actually. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. it. You know what they're doing. And those dudes that were with me, just for those, like, that two-hour window that we shot that one shot. Yeah. We're fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> they were so cool. Where was it? Do you know? Was that? We filmed all that in Mobile, Alabama. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I spent two months in Mobile, Alabama. Wow. Yeah. What'd yeah. you think? How was it? <laughs> Look, shout out to Mobile. Better than New Trier? <clears throat> of course. <laughs> um, God, I'm so sad. Uh, yeah. Mobile was cool for, for being kind of like a place I never thought I would go. There's really good food there. The people rock. Um, am I going to go back? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Uh, but if you, but I'm you wouldn't, you wouldn't. Have, okay. <laughs> you don't get a nice cottage out there. Look at this thing; it's trying to attack me. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty rad. I don't know. Two months is is long to be anywhere. Mm-hmm. And was the whole cast out there? Yeah. 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 I mean, oh, we had yeah. a good time. It was fun. That's Just, where they're going. What they got the film credits out there or something? Because that's what it's all about now, right? Just, <laughs> Don't get me fucking started. <laughs> uh, yeah, the the business aspect of Hollywood is getting out of control. I mean, like everyone moves to LA, right? You move to LA to Hollywood to like get into film. Nothing is made there, so you get like shipped out to Vancouver, Mobile, Alabama. Atlanta's a hot place. Uh, Chicago, there's a mm. shit ton of stuff getting made here. Detroit. Uh, so yeah, it's a little confusing, but I think it's coming home to roost for all these executives that are getting laid off <laughs> when they're like, well, no, what, what, what am I, what? And you're like, well, you had no problem, uh, saving money, sending me away from my family to Mobile, Alabama for two months. So now <laughs> we're going to save money by, uh, making you redundant. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Yeah. yeah. Oops. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, you, you can't take the humanity out of, uh, business culture and I'm sure you guys are, are feel the same way where it's like, what you guys cultivate here? You know what I mean? It's like, Mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like work, I imagine. Mm -hmm. It's like a family, uh, and that's pretty rad. I mean, I see the beef kit here. (laughs) I'm drinking body armor sport water. Um, But like, if if you guys can hang on to it. Yeah, (laughs) wait, we're filming this? (laughs) Let me do some push-ups real quick. Uh, But no, like when you start going too corporate, it gets a little funky for me. Yep, it's very relatable these days. Um, Mm -hmm. Second movie with De Niro for you. Is it? Yeah. I'm just kidding, of course. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my God, I'm working with him again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my joke on the like TV circuit this morning was like, it's probably weird for him to work without me now. <laughs> um, do you and, give him tips? Uh, like, hey, Bob, do it just this way. Just the tip. I gave him just the tip. <laughs> um, no. You know what's funny is like, uh, my biggest concern doing this movie was like, will he remember me? <laughs> because the intern was several years ago yeah. and he delightful does, little movie it was great i thought it was, it was really great. good it yeah. was like the airplane movie oh, of the century movie. yeah uh nancy <laughs> myers is is super under not maybe she's not underrated but i think she's underrated as a filmmaker like an auteur she makes movies that just are fucking rock solid um and shout out to my buddy adam divine also in that movie mm-hmm. um but yeah, working with him again, I was like, just please remember me. Please remember me. He's like, hey, I remember you. I'm like, yes. Fuck yeah. yeah. Uh, and then so on the intern, I was like super crybaby kind of dramatic actor guy. And then in this, I'm like a little bit off the wall. And like after day one, take one of me being this guy, he was like, you're a little different. You're a little different in this movie. Huh? I'm like, yeah, good. Fucking great. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, because for, for him to see like, comment on like oh you have some range yeah. <laughs> you're not just this guy yeah. it was pretty cool <laughs> yeah uh, that is good yeah so you were also uh troy i believe in sausage party the voice how does how does voice <laughs> acting compare to like on screen in terms of the hassle like do you have to be on location somewhere for two months like mobile alabama or no something? that was well first off like covid's changed everything i record a ton of stuff like at my crib now Okay. Like I got a setup for the podcast I do with the workaholics dudes. This is important. Shout out. Mm. Uh, so now I can record from the crib. Um, but back then, yeah, you just went to like a recording place and you'd kick it with Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg as his writing partner, business partner. 
um, and do the lines, riff a little bit. And uh, yeah, that was just like sick to get called in on. Uh, and to know once again that when they think of a, a douchebag sausage, <laughs> yeah, there's you're only one guy. I'm their yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. You're They're like, wait a second, didn't we like not like him? Bring him in. He's the perfect guy to hate. How many times will you read what line? Uh, I mean, this is like, how bad are you, basically? Well, no, um, but it's like, I, don't they, even if it's a good take, even if like, yeah, fucking nailed that. Yeah, you that, get a couple for safety. they still like... Yeah, half dozen times per line, oh, maybe okay. a dozen, or like try this, do that. I thought it was more. I um, thought like it was, they just keep making you go through the ringer. Yeah, usually it's one take for me. <laughs> um, no, I mean, so, like, well, so working for Nancy Myers, like, uh, I was doing this character that cheats on his wife, and so... I had to do take after take after take and I'm like god damn this is crazy and then later I understood like it was because she had to have every range of who this guy was so because Anne Hathaway's character stays with me in the end mm -hmm. so like I had to be likable enough that people were okay with her staying with me but I had to be kind of uh terse enough is that a word mm. uh that people believe it wasn't like out of nowhere that uh, I had an affair, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, I had to do multiple takes, different ways, every fucking scene, so that in the editing bay, she could kind of sculpt what that arc was for me, um, which was just a different experience. But yeah, Sausage Party, you get in there, you say some obnoxious lines, and you, and then you see the movie, and it's unbelievable. But do actors look at that as more of like a side gig? Like, is there less commitment than being on screen? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look, I mean, there's some actors who that is their main gig, right? And they're killing it. And mm -hmm. like, we might not know who they are, but then they'll go, hey, guess what, dude? I'm this voice from this cartoon, this voice from that cartoon, this thing from you that you watched growing up. I was all these characters from that other show. And you're like, holy shit, you formed me as a person yeah. <laughs> and you don't even know who they are. True. Um, but look, I remember way back in the day when like Shrek 2 dropped hearing that Cameron Diaz was making $200,000 an hour. Okay, that's right? now we're talking, that's what I was getting Because at. She get, she's getting paid her quote, mm -hmm. but it doesn't take that much time, mm -hmm. right? So like every, she'd go in the booth for a few days at a time, but yeah, it, it, it's not like you're on set 12 hours a day, like uh, away from your family, blah, blah, blah. I haven't had to sing any uh, songs as Troy the Sausage. I wish, <laughs> I wish. Well, there's a sequel coming out now. Of what, the Sausage, sausage party? party? Weren't they talking about it? No. I mean, can you make that movie <laughs> again? Sorry, I don't know sorry you had to can. find out this way. There's a secret. <laughs> I mean, shit. Dude, I found out, I found out much worse. They, they, they threw Troy on the grill. You want to hear something bad? How about getting fired off of, I did this pilot called Mixed-ish, which was a spinoff of Blackish, and got fired because they were like, you're just not right for it. Uh, and and I was like, so I was bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the guy was like, not a douchebag, and they were like, meh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so then Mark Paul Gosser, who's a super funny guy from Saved by yep. the Bell fame, uh -huh. um, et cetera, he got the part. And then I was, they already aired commercials <laughs> with me in it. And then they like uh -huh. recut the mer commercials with him saying lines I improvised on set. And I was like, ugh. Like I, did you get a writing credit for the show? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so you, you in, in Hollywood, uh, you know, you just gotta fucking roll with it and be cool. And if yeah. I see Kenya Barris who created the show, I'm not like bitter. I'm like, what up? Yeah. Put me in something else, <laughs> my dude. <laughs> you know. Is it still on the air? That show? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a failure. <laughs> uh, they went a season and a half or two. Okay. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, at least you didn't get like Michael J. Fox, right? Like that. That's like the famous thing from Back to the Future. So many. I, dudes, I, like, I oh, mean, I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Yeah, but like it's a lot harder to. They call Back it. To the future. They call it Anders Holm now. Yeah. 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 Because <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, yeah. that was. Um, oh fuck! Who I feel horrible. Guy? It yeah. was. Uh, he was a very famous guy. Yeah. 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 Now we're all assholes because yeah. we're like, who was that guy? Was it Michael J. Fox? <laughs> no, but it's. <laughs> The guy from P Pulp Fiction yeah. and uh, Eric Stoltz. Mask yeah. Stoltz. Stoltz. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and he just wasn't right. And look, Michael J. Fox, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Dude is a legend. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. just because of that movie, but just like he just had that thing, man. He just hit right. Yeah. So how long did it take for like workaholic for you to feel like safe about workaholics then? 
So like that, because it feels oh. like that origin story with you and those guys. I mean, look, so <clears throat> we we got paid 50 grand to shoot a like pitch pilot, right? So they gave okay. us $50,000 and they're like, Fuel, film a couple scenes for what you think the show would be like. And I was like, we need to show them, because we were doing sketch comedy online at the time. And I'm like, let's write an entire pilot. Let's film an entire pilot, super bare bones, and show them that we aren't just like wacky scene, like sketch guys, like we know how to do an episode. So we filmed a pilot and they're like, oh, okay. Uh, and then the person who hired us at Comedy Central, she got fired. Okay. And we were like, Oh, <laughs> and we just sat there like waiting, waiting. New guy comes in and I think three months later gives me a call when I'm at Nordstrom's at Old Orchard for Thanksgiving, home for Thanksgiving. My mom's like buying my dad a tie or something. And I get a call and it's like, hey, it's Kent Alterman. He talks like that. That's okay. Um, <laughs> he's like, hey, I uh, just want to let you know we're going to give you guys a show of 10 episodes. I was like, whoa this is yeah. crazy um and we ha he's like sorry we had to wait so long we're waiting for the south park guys to get back they were doing book of mormon on broadway we want to launch you guys after south park so you're just like holy shit so then me and the guy and this is the long story to your so yeah. your no, it's whatever. a good story but yeah. so we get to work I'm like going, I'm like, and I get this news while I'm home here. So I'm hitting like Thanksgiving parties. Like, yeah, I got my TV shows got picked <laughs> up. Uh, so fuck you. Um, <clears throat> we go back, we make the show we want because nobody's paying attention to us. Like uh, Nick Swartzen had also just gotten a sketch show. Um, Nick Swartzen's super duper funny, way higher profile than we were. And um they were kind of watching that. And we got away with doing 10 crazy episodes of TV. Uh, and then they just sat on that waiting for South Park to finish. And they were like, look, we've watched these episodes. You guys can start writing season two. We know, oh, wow. we know this is going to be good. Um, and that was like a huge vote of confidence. And I think uh, not to get political, <laughs> But uh, we aired our first episode. We like snuck our pilot in after the Donald Trump roast okay. back in the day. And it was like people fucking loved it. Uh, but then we didn't get on the, on the air for a little while after that. But that was a huge kind of vote of confidence. It was like seeing Twitter, which was kind of brand new, being, mm -hmm. brand new being like, what is this show? Who are these guys? Who's this douchebag? <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. So that was it. When when they gave us the season, like start writing season two, we were like, oh, cool. Um, but then of course season three, as we became kind of like more of a fixture on the network, they were a little more like, okay, well now we're kind of paying attention to what you guys are writing and you can't do that or you can't do that. Uh, too gay. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like our, our, the no we got the most was too gay. We were like, <laughs> wait, where's the wait line 10 years on that? And we'll see yeah. where that no goes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, we are proud to be, as RuPaul herself stated, the gayest show on television. <laughs> and that, that sound clip is out there and yeah. it uh, warmed our bellies. Did you ever have like, did you ever object to anything? Because I was like watching like clips that kind of jog my memory, and they have the one where you're at a um, like a college fair, like a work fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you yeah, have yeah. like a dog licking your ass. Yes. After having code red. So that. I yeah. was like, was there anything that was when too we were pitching far? ideas? I was yeah. like, at some point, can a dog just lick my ass? <laughs> and the guys are like, no. And I go, well, that's the one thing I want. And at some point, it's going to happen. Season five, maybe. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I don't want to hear too gay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, like, look, the dog licked my ass, by the way. <laughs> they put, somebody put peanut butter right next to my butthole. Um, and I was wearing what's known as like a dance belt in uh, the community where like, you're not nude, your butthole's not out there for everybody okay. to see. Uh, it's like a thong. And someone like spread peanut butter right there. And then the dog just like went to town. And I was like, 
<laughs> this isn't bad. <laughs> Should we do another take? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, are we still rolling? <laughs> um, but Where did everyone uh, send the dog back to your trailer? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. If the trailer's rocking, yeah. I'm fucking a dog. Uh, but we never, there was never a... I don't want to do that. Although there was there was one time where the guys were like, hey, we're going to put maggots in a burrito. Just eat the maggots. And I was like, I don't want to do that. Uh, and they were like, what? It's funny, though. And I was like, we can cut around that for sure. <laughs> um, so I did like put my foot down. I was like, we don't have to do this. Wait, that was like, Adam wanted you to do that? Or? Like, yeah, they were like, yeah. why? Well, just, just do it. It's funny. I'm like, I've had a dog lick my butthole. Like, I just don't want to eat maggots out of a burrito. I don't find that too hard to understand. Anyway, yeah. but like, yes, as far as writing, um, it's funny. We would split rooms sometimes and you would come back in the room and find a find out what a storyline would be for you to do. And sometimes they'd be like, so then, uh, so your swim buddies are in town and like, they're like shaving you and you're like <laughs> naked and you're like, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, that, we did that. <laughs> you know, and like you would come back in the room and find out that somebody's pitching something that makes you, you're in like some sort of compromised position. And you're like, if it's funny, we do it. Uh, that was kind of always the mentality. And there was never like, the, the, the thing that would be too far for me was if it um, was meaner than it was funny. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that's not our tone. You know, we just, we didn't want to be the show where it's like, we wanted to be stupid. We didn't want to be mean and stupid. Yeah. Uh, if we did something that was offensive, we wanted it to kind of be from a place of ignorance or like our, we were trying our best and mm -hmm. just didn't know. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that was, that was the line. If we didn't do anything, we'd be like, uh, is that funny or just cruel? You know, and I, this is coming from the guy who kicked a raccoon. Um, <laughs> who so, took the most for the team out of the three of you? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, like we were all essentially naked a lot. <laughs> Gayest show on TV. Um, <laughs> but like, I mean, Adam did his, uh, this was a good one. When Adam tucked his dick between his legs and we were getting ready to go to like hedonism for the week or whatever. <laughs> And at, we're like, I'm like going around the uh, camera being like, who's ready to rock? Who's ready to rock? And Adam's like, you guys, I can't go. And we're, I'm like, oh, like what? What's going on, dude? And he goes, I can't go because my dick fell off. And he takes his <laughs> towel off and has his dick tucked between his legs. And what was cool was uh, the network was like, absolutely not. Uh, we can't show pubic hair. And Adam was like, so then you're telling me to shave. <laughs> and so he just shaved his pubes and the network was like, okay, yes, now, now you can <laughs> no, show it's it. Acceptable. You know, and that was the game for a while where like we would say fug instead of fuck because we couldn't say fuck. Mm -hmm. uh, we, as soon as they told us we could do the middle finger, we had an episode, we were like, oh, and we just, did an episode where we were constantly like, all right, dude, I'll see you later. Yeah, take care. Bye now. And they were like, why? Do not tell them anything. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun of the episode was being like the young, what we thought were like wild dogs on set. Must have been a blast, huh? Just seven it was the seasons best. of. It's the best. Is it hard to like do other shit after that? Like yes. How, yeah. 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 Because yeah, yeah, stuff feels like work now. I mean, like, look, it felt like work, too, because you wanted to create something that was good and like you're some sometimes your hours are long mm -hmm. um, and uh, sometimes you'd be like, no, it's funnier to show your butthole, not your nuts. And you get in arguments. Um, but like it was the best. And you, and you felt like safe to improvise insane shit. Mm -hmm. And then like you go to another show and. Uh, you do, uh, sometimes you feel okay, like with Seth, uh, Rogan, you're like, okay, these guys, they play ball, they get it. You can kind of go wild and wacky, uh, but other places, like, you're just like, don't say that. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't say it, don't even say it. Don't say that in front of De Niro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, but, you know, but like, yeah. you, you just don't want to like embarrass yourself mm -hmm. and have people be like, is that what's going on in your brain? <laughs> yeah. Put your put your butthole away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like what don't don't do that. So it was uh it was our safe space. Yes. You know? 
So I, funny enough, my sister graduated from Madison. And I was there for your commencement speech, and you were, yeah, you were talking a little bit. Wait, about, did we talk about this somewhere already? I don't think so. Have no. we never met? We've never met. Okay, but you were kind of talking about how you met those guys and Adam and Blake and uh, Kyle. Was it just at a random LA club or what? Uh, I was like, who are these fucking hot dudes? <laughs> I have to be the hottest guy here. Um, no, so Adam uh, and I met at Second City, Los Angeles, okay. which is like a satellite operation where you don't get as funny as the people here. <laughs> um, but Adam, right out the gate, had all these characters, and I was like, I'm gonna use this person, because uh, I was mostly a writer, and I, I did improv to like meet people, um, and I was and, like, I wrote a pilot for Adam, and I was like, oh, it's gonna be about a stand-up comedian in College of Madison, uh, and he was like, yo, you gotta meet my boys, uh, who I went to college with. He dropped out of um, a junior college in Orange County, this huge fucking college, where he met Blake and Kyle. Oh, okay. Blake and Kyle grew up with each other. Kyle was already like director extraordinaire, um, and Adam met Blake in improv class. So then we just started making sketches together and doing live sketch shows together in LA. Um, and that was like us getting our 10,000 hours of being mm -hmm. kind of funny and like, learning from each other and like stealing each other's moves and like going, eh, that's not that funny or that's ah, a bad idea or here's what I can add to your idea. We were, we were for real, when you move to LA, you meet a bunch of people trying to make it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but then you, you learn quickly who's a flake and who's really in it. Adam Devine is in it. This dude was gonna become a movie star. Uh, Blake Anderson was not going to become a movie star <laughs> because he's the chillest dude ever, but he's also the funniest dude ever, right? So he had a perspective and a um, like a bar where he's kind of in the back being like, oh, we can do better than that. And you're like, okay, if he doesn't think it's funny, we're probably not there yet, right? And then I have like a writer brain where I'm kind of like orchestrating like, okay, Adam's got this character, it's not funny yet, but what if we took it here and did that? And then Kyle was a director. So we really had this fucking A-team. Yeah, Avengers. Where like Kyle was the dude with the fucking cigar, Adam was Mr. T, I was Face, and Blake was Murdoch. And I think we need to remake that movie, <laughs> that show now. Uh, but we really put it together like that and we were like accountable and we were like, dude, we meet every Tuesday and Thursday, we film on the weekend. Mm -hmm. We pitch Tuesdays, we, I go and write Wednesdays, I come back with the script, we rewrite it together Thursday and then we film it on the weekend. And like we did that for years, years of like nobody watching shit, right? And then suddenly someone had seen our stuff and was like, hey, come in and meet at Comedy Central. And we were like, it's go time. Yeah, how old were you at that time? Uh, I was, I was 28 when we filmed the pilot, and the other dudes are 25. Nice. Yeah. How old were you when uh, you and Adam first met? Then, I was 25, and he was 22. Okay. I think. I think. No shit. Maybe 20. Um, maybe. Yeah, it was so funny because when I met Adam, I was obviously 21. He had maybe just turned 21, and his girlfriend at the time was 19, who was like going to school with him. And we were like, I was like, cool, let's go to this bar. And she's like, I can't. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck is going on? This is crazy. You know. I saw um, he just did Call Her Daddy. <laughs> like a couple what of months that? ago. Oh, it's it's the, like, the podcast. It's like. Uh, she's the new Oprah Winfrey now. Yeah. She's, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. And they did like, they actually pulled like a great joke. They, uh, she like had a shot of her and she's like, how many women did you take away their trust? And they played like the uh, She Will Be Loved like silhouette like song and everyone thought it was Adam Levine and then it turned it was him. <laughs> right, 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 yeah. yeah. Dude, he gets so many crazy messages from people that are either fans of or hate uh, Adam Levine from Maroon 5. And like, <laughs> it's funny because I'm like, I'm sure Adam Levine also gets messages for Adam Devine, <laughs> but I'm just like, does he know? Like, you know, yeah. we got to get those two in a room for sure. People are telling <laughs> Adam Devine that he's a better singer than Adam Levine now after Pitch Perfect. I mean, shit, dude's got pipes. And what's funny is when I met Adam, they also offered a, um, they had improv classes at Second City and then they had like improv for singing or singers. Hmm. And he was like, yeah, so I also do like the singing classes. And I was like, Cool, dude. Uh, <laughs> am I friends with this guy? Do I keep being friends with this guy? Oh, yeah, that's never gonna come in handy. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, but he's yeah. truly like, 
he's an entertainer, yeah. right? So he just wanted like another arrow for the quiver, you know? Yeah. Are you, what's your, uh, do you still like prefer writing? Like, would that be your main thing? Or are you like, I'm a, I like doing that? Uh, you know, it's, it's more rewarding to write something and be like, wow, you know, you can hold a script and be like, tap, tap, tap on the desk. And you're like, all these pages I came up with, this is a cohesive thing with characters I created in a world that didn't exist until I put it on here. Uh, and then to get it produced is just awesome. And to have actors come and improvise instead of saying your lines is a fucking, no. <laughs> to, to have actors like say your lines and kill it or change the lines and make it different. But like, it, it's just, to, it's super rewarding for me to imagine something and then see it play out. Um, but then the acting part is, a, for me, it's a little bit more of like a trust fall kind of like, do I like this or do I like the like embarrassment of mm -hmm. it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, do I just, am I like flogging myself every time I say something super dumb in, in front of Robert De Niro, one of my heroes, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Um, so there is that kind of like tightrope walk of, yeah, just fucking sack up, go out there, be a buffoon and if they like it, you'll keep working. If you're bad, you won't work. And like, you know, it's been a while since I've worked, guys. <laughs> um, you know, but yeah, it, it's like a, it's like two different brains. And when you're writing for a couple months in your fucking, like my home office, you want to get outside and like mix it up with people. And then when you get on set and you're working those crazy long hours, you're like, why am I here? I just want to get back to like my office and mm -hmm. sit down. Yeah but you don't get free swag for being a writer, <laughs> so. You don't get body armor. Exactly, yeah. brought to you by Body Armor Sport Water. It's not water, it's sport water. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, well, yeah, I think, uh, anything else? I don't think so. No. Go see I mean, about your father. Go, yeah. go see about your yeah. father. Also, uh, Muppets Mayhem is a show I just did okay. uh, that'll be on Disney Plus, so if you got kids, uh, I also I play a douchebag record exec on that, uh, but this is something you can watch with your kids. It's super so dope. No, no buttholes in that one. There might be some butthole <laughs> Easter eggs. All right, no spoilers. No spoilers. Uh, no animals butthole is crazy. <laughs> it's like pink and hairy. Uh, no, but that that just dropped too. And uh, if you like podcasts like this one, check out This Is Important with my boys Adam Devine, Blake Anderson, and Kyle Newichek. You know, it's just three. Three extremely stupid people uh, talking about the dumbest shit you've ever heard. One yeah, of my like, favorite uh, like TikTok accounts, yeah. just your podcast account. I just scroll every day. Do we have a oh, yeah. TikTok? Oh, yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah, yeah, you knew that. I mean, it's not I, you posting. <laughs> honestly, like, I, I'm about to be 42 uh, at the end of the month. I can't get on TikTok, right? Understandable, yeah. Right? It's, it's intimidating. No. You open it, it's like all these bells and whistles. You want to close right away. Can I, I mean, something, intimidating. It's awesome. What's that? It's it, awesome. It's awesome. I know, but yeah. like, I can't do it. Like, I feel so awkward, like filming myself, putting it on, but like scrolling through all the other things. It's it just and sucks you in. They know yeah. exactly what you like. So on your yeah. your for you page, it'll be buttholes, douchebags. Yeah, and all yeah, that. yeah. They'll yeah. have it right for you. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. All right, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just like, I don't know. Instagram already has a stranglehold on my fucking yeah whatever dopamine yeah, yeah that's why know? i won't do it because i, I yeah. know i'm just gonna be you know i i was like kind of like i'm gonna check it out i feel like i should and then i'm like well now i'm just here four hours yeah ago. tuesday yeah. writer days are, are we, over are we gonna get like super real here at the end of this and just be like <laughs> hey guys it's dangerous yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't fuck around with social media only listen to podcasts yeah. <laughs> brought to you by jp graziano yep. beef kit there you go is that pretty good that's great yeah, oh, yeah. 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 i love yeah. that take one. you should yeah. take one for nice, sure dude. take it back to la yeah i Ohio. might just take it back to the hotel throw it on the bed and roll around you know <laughs> that's fine a lot of people do that too yeah, i might that, i that, might do that'd that. be good um yeah about my father comes out may 26 sebastian's in it yeah Robert. sebastian maniscalco super funny mm -hmm. um it's kind of it's more or less based on his life his own father uh, it's a it's a good story, you know. It's fun. I had well, when we walked out, I was like, you know, I'm just happy to see a movie like that again. I feel like it's been a while. Hard comedy, yeah, you mean? just yeah, kind of like that. Where they, yeah, yeah. 
like a, like a good like a like a good like kind of date night rom com kind of movie. Like yeah. It's, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. It, it has been a while. I feel, I, like. I feel yeah. like I mean I know someone's gonna be like you fucking idiot. There's this, this, and this, but, yeah. but there's not, dude. Yeah. There's yeah. not. Yeah. You would know about it. Yeah. yeah, there are. There's some straight to streaming stuff, but who who you, you yeah, want to go to the yeah. theater? You want to yeah. get out there? Yep. Experience. I agree. I agree. All right, then, Anders. Thanks, man. We thank you guys. It. Yeah, thank it was you. great. It was fun. Sure. Meet you guys. All right, that's everybody. Thank you for listening. We'll see you tomorrow.